Going back to Miami with every bit of momentum, the leadership from last year's DPLY Marcus Smart, who encouraged the Boston fans to not give up on them prior to Game 5, also stating that nothing's changed for the Seas despite Gabe Vincent being out for the Heat, fueled the Celtics to an all-business approach. Beasting for minute 1 through 48 helped make this a whole new series as this best of seven shifts back to Dade County. Four starters in Tatum, Smart, White, and Brown scored 20 plus points. Stay tuned to see my take on the Boston players that have and continue to be unsung heroes, whether or not they can make history by doing what 152 teams before them have failed to, and the full basis behind how they've exacted partial revenge over the last two games. Right quick though, significantly less than a quarter of my channel's audience is subscribed, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe. We're really close to 100k, so it would be greatly appreciated. Also hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps with the growth and ultimately production of these videos. Lastly, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter for NBA edits. I also post channel updates on there, so you always know when I post. Appreciate you. Joe Mazzulla's record as a head coach in elimination games improved to an undefeated 4-0. Derek White was the hero offensively, specifically in the first half, but really all game. D. White was cooking like he's been for essentially this entire playoff run. Man dropped the team high 24 points, knocking down six deep range bombs. Coming into game five, Derek was averaging 12.6 points on a shooting split of 50 45 95, and was the first player in NBA history with 200 plus points on a 50-45-95% split during a playoff run. It's the offensive prowess from D. White, and additionally the defensive impulsiveness from Robert Williams, that can often go overlooked amidst this stacked Boston squad. Time Lord's been a heavily undermentioned player in my two recent Celtic videos, but despite the fact that he's been moved to a bench role ever since Game 6 of the East Semis, man hasn't complained one bit and stepped up when he's needed to, being the elite anchor that he's always been. Tatum was taken into the hoop like Giannis early on, and I'm not sure why we don't see more of that type of aggressiveness going downhill from the man every game. He's almost like the version of a Dedekumpo that settles for too many jumpers. Even as the Seas pushed ahead in Game 5, from an attempting to be unbiased NBA fan's perspective, it was tough not to ponder about the games ahead and the uphill battle this team still has to climb. For the Seas in particular though, they didn't seem to have that thought even cross their minds whatsoever, taking it one possession at a time, individually fulfilling their roles, and collectively coming together by trusting each other in terms of making the next pass. However, winning, winning. on the road and then flying back to Boston for a potential Game 6 to beat a Heat team that was rolling through an Eastern Conference as underdogs prior to these last two Celtic wins in what would have to be four straight games will be a near impossible task. That said, as mentioned by Tatum and I in my last Boston upload prior to Game 5, if they can legitimately focus in with every bit of brain power to definitively take it one game at a time in the truest sense of the cliché, they have a great chance of getting back into this series. Whatever that one game at a time approach meant for each individual on this Boston team for Game 5, it needs to be repeated twice more in order for them to complete such an insurmountable challenge. Boston's top teachers, all of on the sidelines with the coaching staff, the players out of the rotation, and between the four lines, need to use said individual approaches to come together collectively as one. Jalen was knocking down contested deep range bombs with that sweet follow through of his. Smart was providing typically elite on ball pressure, stripping the heat with beastly steals. Grant Will was staying with slashers on the perimeter, funneling them to the hoop, then blocking their shots. Horford was both knocking down threes and crashing the glass like a menace. And when the Celtics did get a tad bit lazy and lost the slightest bit of focus, Joe Mazzulla was quick to stop the action with timely TOs. Additionally, Robert Williams changed the personality of this one with a block three-point shot on Jimmy Butler. Jalen Brown's defense continued to be stellar. The way Mazzulla switched up different looks on Jimmy has gone really overlooked. One time down the court, it's White guarding him. Then he's getting Horford or Rob Will switched onto him. Another possession, he'll have Tatum on him. Then Smart will get the assignment. The scariest part about Boston's defense on Butler was that 
they didn't even have Jalen Brown guarding him too often, who's shown to be the most challenging one-on-one -on -one defender for Butler to score on. That means having JB as the safety scoping out passes while Smart defends the ball handler or White does has been so beneficial for this Boston defense that Missoula won't decide to put Brown on Butler too much in order to keep him in that safety role unless Butler's going off and they really need him to. Earlier in the series, we saw Adebayo have his way with Tatum in terms of scoring on him. I thought Jason was playing much better defense on Bam in this game. The only thing stopping Boston, in my humble opinion, comes down to their three kryptonites, which have been turnovers, scoring droughts, and the occasional lapse in focus defensively, specifically with their lack of an ability to protect the rim. This comes down to Boston getting way too comfortable with whatever lead they develop, which results in them consistently settling for jump shots and either not running an offensive set or getting utterly complacent and just throwing it away causing transition bunnies for the opposition. There's little to no margin for error when you're this deep into the postseason, so Boston needs to realize their bad habits, realize their productive ones, and perform the latter. While the Heat were without one of their top contributors in Vincent, who's nursing an ankle sprain, the Celtics are dealing with a setback of their own in terms of Malcolm Brogdon playing through a significant injury. Brogdon is inspirationally playing through a partially torn tendon in his shooting arm. Malcolm suffered the injury during Game 1 of this Heat series. As Shaq mentioned, without Gabe Vincent, you would have thought Bam Adebayo would have stepped up in a game of this magnitude, but that wasn't the case, as Adebayo really struggled. How bad do you want it? Not merely from the having won two in a row Boston Celtics perspective, but Miami's is going to determine each squad's fate with how elite both teams are in these heated East Finals. 